This is Don Williams. This is a follow-on video to the 3D visualization of popular color spaces. In the past, we showed how sRGB, Adobe RGB, ProPhoto, and ET RGB were rendered in this 3D LAB color space. And that's what you see rotating here. This is one way of visualizing 3D color spaces. Another one more familiar, perhaps, this is the LAB, is the YXY. And this is that popular horseshoe shape. Uh, we're going to be looking at the LAB version. It's a, it's a 3D coordinate system. As you see, this is the empty space. I'll be now toggling on where sRGB lies within this volume, this LAB volume. And you'll see, by the way, the outline of this color space is projected down onto the bottom flat here. Okay, so that's the sRGB and where it lies in a volume sense in the LAB color space. Next, I'm going to show you, turn on Adobe RGB. And now you'll see it's much larger. And I'm also on the sRGB. I'm going to simply turn up the opacity on that so you can see the difference more dramatically. So the outlier one is Adobe RGB, and you can see naturally it's a wider color space. So these are the only two we're going to deal with today. And what I'd like to include in this chapter two of this movie is to show where popular color target colors lie within these working color spaces. And I have loaded up the colors of a very popular color checker SG. And there they are. So I'm going to turn this around and the colors are rendered in, as they say, uh, true color in this version of the software. It's a little difficult to see. So where they lie with respect to one another here without zooming in and moving a lot. So briefly, I'm just going to turn this into a two dimensional. And we're going to look at it this way for now to give you a little bit more context. And you'll see that uh, it's populated pretty randomly and evenly throughout that color space, at least within the confines uh, described here. But notice also, right down in here, there is a little bit of concentration of colors. And by the way, most of you are familiar with the color checker SG are probably know that these are all the flesh tones. So when that target was designed, it was designed with portraiture in mind. So these are a lot of flesh tone colors in here. And they, let's face it, they act as magnets, color magnets, to focus color accuracy and color profiling with respect to that kind of uh, a use case. So I'm going to go back to the 3D and show you where that is. Okay. So there they are again. And by the way, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more on that. So here's all those flesh tones. I'll zoom back out. I'm going to turn these off. But before I do, I wanted to show you where those colors lie within an sRGB color space. And I will then turn this transparency down. And you can see there are a number of colors that are out of gamut for sRGB. Okay. How does it look with Adobe RGB? You can see that there are still a few, but not as many. So there are, even with Adobe RGB, there are colors that are outside the gamut of Adobe RGB for the color checker. So here they are. These are the, the flesh tones. We're gonna do the same for some popular cultural heritage targets. And there's two of them. There's the NGTV2. And there's also the new FAGI19264 target. And so what are the popular colors? What are the color magnets, if you will, for cultural heritage? So I will make a clean slate here. We'll still keep on the Adobe RGB, but we'll turn on the colors and where those colors lie for the NGTV2. And there they are. Now, you'll see relative to the color checker that there's a different distribution of colors. But notice that 
there is a concentration of colors in this area here. And it's not too far from those flesh tones that are shown in the color checker SG. Okay, so there was, with that in mind, in this very narrow hue angle here is where many of the parchment, vellums, etc., colors of cultural heritage lie. The new Fagi 19264. And again, we had a high concentration of hue angles in this. Um, that is about a 75 degree to a 90 degree hue angle for cultural heritage type colors. Uh, once again, I'll turn on the color checker SG to give you a sense of that. So you can see there was this, with the relative uh, distribution of the color checker SG, there was a large void here. Uh, just to give you a sense of that again. So right in this area is where many of the cultural heritage colors lie, this 75 to maybe 95 degree hue angle. So I'll turn that on again. And you can see we tried to populate that better with those kinds of colors. So this is just a brief movie on where each of those colors lie. And in the next session beyond this, chapter three, we'll also show where real colors, not just target colors, but content colors lie within this color space. Uh, we have two good examples, one contributed by Andrew Bruce from the National Gallery in London, and another one by Bruno Vandermullen uh, in Belgium for a, a, a great study he did where they actually went in and measured uh, parchments and vellums. And we'll show you that in the next session. Mm -hmm.